Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam IP reporting for The Media Speaks. And here we go. I've got a question for you. I need to know if you can spot a terrorist. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Let's lay this scenario out. We're going to do a little bit of uh, acting for you, if you will. I'm going to run through this. Two people. They're driving down the road. One guy looks at the other. I am going to kill you. It's over. Other guy looks over. What do you mean it's over? I am going to make such a display out of you that everybody there is going to remember that I was there. Nah, we're going to blow it up. Today, we are blowing it up. You don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean I don't know what I'm talking about? I've been doing this forever, and I'm telling you there's going to be bloodshed tonight. There's going to be bloodshed tonight. It's going to be you and the people that are dumb enough to think as you do. And then you get out of the car, and that's the kind of talk you hear. Or that's, that's somebody that needs to be looked into, wouldn't you say? You're wrong! That's me and my best friend arguing football. Listen, that is the way. The mindset that I just laid out to you is going to be the mindset of a lot of people that have nothing on their minds other than having a good time. However, Super Bowl fans to face mandatory TSA pat-downs, Paul Joseph Washington, Info Wars. Now, does all, you all guys know that the TSA is going where it shouldn't be going. We all know that. There's something in here that really stood out to me and I can't overstress it. It's, they're trying to do this thing where they can tell who is going to do something based on the way that they are acting. Listen to this. The DHS is also developing technology to be used at security events, which purports to monitor malintent on behalf of an individual who passes through a checkpoint. The promotional video for the program explains how future attribute screening technology fast checkpoints will conduct psychological and behavioral tests in order to weed out suspected terrorists or criminals. In other words, you're in fight mode, you're in grr mode, you've had a few beers, you're trash talking your best friend, he's trash talking you back, your team's going down, and you're uh, Do you know? 90% of the fans that get into it to that degree would fail a psychological test at that moment. It doesn't mean they're crazy all the time, but they're hyped and they're earned. They got, especially you're going to the Super Bowl. You know how hard it is to get tickets to the damn Super Bowl? <laughs> Just ask New England since they can't go any other way. That's my team. Get it, people. This is insanity. People are hyped up, they're driven, they're loud, they're going to be having this, this minority report like technology. Um, look the movie up if you don't know. They're going to have this ridiculous stuff everywhere and widely, widely abused. Mark my words, this is a disaster in the making. Not only is the TSA infringing on people's Fourth Amendment rights, and I don't know if they're doing it at this Super Bowl. This was originally written in uh, 2011. But if they are going to do it and start trying to read people's heads, again, what if they do it at airports? Nervousness, extreme nervousness. Well, I mean, I'm not afraid to fly. I love flying, actually. But your heart races. You say a little prayer on the way up. But what if it's somebody that's really afraid? They're going to fail that psychological exam. This is ridiculous. Um, you know... But this is a candidate right here for the big white hat. I'm telling you, I see dunce caps. Government to dispose of radioactive waste by putting it in our silverware. Oh, they can decontaminate it. No, they can't. They can take certain elements out of it. Certain elements they cannot take out of it. And what they do is they don't test for the elements that they can't get out of it. So... I might be wrong on what can be removed out of silverware. I'm a commentator, not a physicist, but I'm going to give you an analogy where you will get the point. There's cobalt, there's uranium, and there's cesium. Well, they can get the cesium and the cobalt out. Again, analogy, maybe they can't. They can get the cesium and the cobalt out, but they can't get the uranium out. 
Okay. And what you do is you test for the two that you can get out, and when you, when you see almost no traceable amounts, you say, well, look at that. It's safe. Of course, you didn't test for uranium because you couldn't do anything with it, and if you could test for it, it's glowing. Look up Bed Bath & Beyond Radioactive uh, Dispenser. The overwhelming, the Washington's blog, the overwhelming scientific consensus is that any amount of radiation, no matter how small, can cause cancer and other serious health effects. Current safety standards are based on the ridiculous assumption that everyone exposed is a healthy man in his 20s and the radioactive particles ingested into the body cause no more damage than radiation hitting the outside of the body. In the real world, however, even low doses of radiation can cause cancer. Moreover, small particles of radiation called internal emitters, if you don't know what eternal emitters are, internal emitters are, look it up, please. These get inside the body and are much more dangerous than general exposures to radiation. But the Department of Energy, Ron Paul wanted to get rid of the Department of Energy, they keep us safe. He's a, he's a nutcase. The Department of Energy, the agency which is responsible for the design, testing, and production of all nuclear U.S. weapons, promotes nuclear energy as one of its core functions, which has been covering up nuclear accidents for decades and has used mutant lines of human cells to promote voodoo anti-scientific arguments, purposes letting, proposes letting radiation into our silverware. Counterpunch mentioned this. Even the deregulation-happy Wall Street Journal sounded shocked. The Department of Energy is proposing to allow the sale of tons of scrap metal from government nuclear sites, an attempt to reduce waste that critics say could lead to radiation-tainted belt buckles, surgical implants, and other consumer products. They don't know what to do with the nuclear waste that is coming out of the nuclear power plants that should never have been opened to begin with. One of many reasons is this reason that is now abundantly clear. Um, so the way around it is you can limit the waste if you put it in the silverware and in the metal and if you give it to the people. You people that are saying that eugenics is fake are not knowing anything beyond the latest Rihanna Kesha single, do you? Look, look up the facts on radioactivity. Look what it does to your body. It's dreadful, people, and it does not need to be in our silverware. So now we're going to have to start testing these things ourselves. I would contact Chris Busby on the best way to do that. Chris Busby. This isn't just a show. This is a place where you can get solutions, and he is a smarter man than me when it comes to physics, by far. Goldman Sachs made 400 million betting on food prices in 2012, while hundreds of millions starved. I wish that this surprised me. Um, I'll tell you something. Um, one of the things I would not do is uh, people were predicting a rise in heating oil. And I did not invest in it because that was going to make it worse for the people in it. I'm part of a mutual fund. You know what? I don't have any GE or any of this nuclear poisoning bastards in my... Uh, I'm an infrastructure uh, loan person. Infrastructure mutual fund, if I must be correct. So my point is... I think it's morally wrong to deliberately drive the price of these things up for people that need them. I think it's wrong to support the nuclear industry just to get a uh, return back. And I think this is uh, as grotesque as anything that I've ever heard. <coughs> Why does it seem like wherever there is human suffering, some giant bank is making money off of it? According to a new report from the World Depart Development Movement, Goldman Sachs made about $400 million betting on food prices last year. Overall, 2012 was quite a banner year for Goldman Sachs. Revenues for Goldman increased by about 30% in 2012, and the price of Goldman stock has risen more than 40% in the last 12 months. This is on the economic collapse, people. It is estimated that the average banker at Goldman brought in a pay and bonus package of approximately $396,500 for 2012. 
So without a doubt, Goldman Sachs is swimming in money right now. It goes on, and I'm going to as well. But what is the price for all of this success? Many claim that the rampant speculation on food prices by the big banks has dramatically increased the global price of food and has caused the suffering of hundreds of millions of poor families around the planet to become much worse. At this point, global food prices are more than twice as high as they were in 2003. Approximately 2 billion people on the planet spend at least half of their incomes on food, and close to a billion people regularly do not have enough food to eat. It is, a moral of Goldman, is it moral of Goldman Sachs and other big banks like Barclays and Morgan Stanley to make hundreds of millions of dollars betting on the price of food if it is going to drive up global food prices and make it harder for poor families around the world to feed themselves? This is the kind of human filth that just makes me wonder how these people can even go to sleep at night. Another one, this is by the World Development Movement Report. Goldman Sachs is the global leader in a trade that is driving food prices up while nearly a billion people are hungry. The bank lobbied for a financial deregulation that made it possible to pour billions into the commodity derivatives market, created the necessary financial instruments, and is now raking in the profits. Speculation is fueling volatility and food price spikes hurting people who struggle to afford food across the world. All right, you, you still got your money in Goldman Sachs? Do you? Do you feel good? Do you feel good about yourself starving people? If not, there are ways to get money back without relying on these monsters, people. There are credit unions. There are, there are many things that you can do to get your money away from these Morgan Stanleys, these Barclays, these Wells Fargo. I did a report on how they took a woman's house who's dying of cancer, Wells Fargo. <sighs> Definitely, people, if we don't stop and if, if we continue to allow these things to go on, then pretty soon their dream will be lived and we will all be wishing for serfdom uh, compared to what we're going to have. Slate.com. I like to end with different things, I always do. Our galaxy is crammed full of planets. This was interesting. One of the most exciting fields in astronomy, really in all of science, is the search for alien worlds. The first planet around another star was found in 1992, though the star was the remnant of a supernova, so not terribly sun-like. And the first planet around a sun-like star just three years later. Fast forward two decades, and we now know of hundreds of such planets and have thousands more detected that have to be confirmed that data look good, but we still call them candidates until confirmation. It goes on, and this is good. In fact, there are enough, uh, there are enough that the field of exoplanets in the next step of the scientific process past discovery, categorization. We have enough known planets orbiting other stars, orbiting cool ones, having tight orbits or wide sweeping ones, and once you do that, you have very, very interesting things that you see starting to fall in place. I'm going to do one more. For example, you can use some statistics to extrapolate how many planets there must be in our galaxy. A new study has done just that, and the number they have is very stunning. They calculate that there may be a hundred billion planets in the Milky Way, with 17 million of them the size of Earth. I thought, many people know, I, I do believe uh, that we have been visited before, but I'm not one of the crazy people about it. If somebody showed me uh, proof that uh, dispelled it, I, I'd listen to it. Point is, for us to believe that we're all alone on this ball, to quote the movie Alien, is ridiculous. Um, I'm sure there's you know, other things out there, and I mean, it just seems impossible. You know, one in 17 billion odd that we're going to find at least fungus on another planet. I'm, let's face it, we are probably not all alone. And I, I think the reason I like to tie this into politics and at the end of shows when I see these articles is because I think it's important to realize that there are things out here that are much bigger than us. I talk about God, which I believe in, and even if you don't, I put in things like this as well. Um, there are things much bigger than us, and Dianne Feinstein's banning of our right to protect ourselves 
And I think if we look past it, then we can forget about a lot of the things that drive us apart, and we can continue on a path that will take us away from things like Diane Feinstein driving us apart as well. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you so much for doing so. Please donate to the show and advertise on it if you can. Good night, friends. God bless.